My name is Jeff Spencer, and I lead product marketing here at Tailscale. Today, I'm joined by James Tucker and Jordan Whited, who are here to tell us a bit more about some really cool throughput upgrades for Tailscale. James and Jordan, before we get started, can you tell me a bit more about yourself and what you work on just broadly here at Tailscale? And James, we'll start with you. So yeah, I uh, work on a bit of everything um, from the control plane through to the client, uh, mostly sort of focused on, on things that affect the user experience. Um, Ever since I started, I've been looking at performance periodically. And then uh, when Jordan joined, started doing the same thing. So we uh, we eventually joined forces. Great. And you, Jordan? I enjoy working on networking performance problems. And I've been primarily focused on the Tailscale client code since joining and improving its performance. Cool. So for throughput, let's start at the beginning. Now, when we talk about throughput for Tailscale, uh, what do we mean and why does it matter for Tailscale users? James? Yeah, so throughput is uh, is how fast your your downloads or your uploads are going, right? Um, and and particularly, it's the number it's related to the number that you see when it hits peak. When when you have a large file, um, you you typically see it sort of it, it gets faster over time. Um, so it, it's mostly affecting things like if you're fetching files from a network storage, something like that. That's that's where you'll see it. And what does throughput uh, depend on? How, how do you optimize it in your network? Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of factors. So um, latency is a big thing. Um, and, and so if you have very high latency on, on your network, then you will often find that throughput is slower. But there's things that network engineers do, and we'll talk more about this, uh, to improve throughput in those scenarios. But the first thing with tail scale, the most important thing is, is make sure you've established a direct connection. So. Um, we have some knowledge base articles on making sure that you've established a direct connection. 90% of our nodes do. Um, it's, it's something that we pride ourselves on being very good at. Um, but if you're noticing slow speed, that's the first thing to check is that you have a direct connection. Cool. So taking a, a, just a quick step back here, Tailscale is built on WireGuard, which is a modern way to connect devices together in an end-to-end -end encrypted way. But Tailscale uses WireGuard Go, which runs in the user space, so it's been less performant traditionally than kernel WireGuard. How do these improvements compare to WireGuard? Yeah, so both implementations are WireGuard, right? They, they're both upstream WireGuard and, and what, we, what we're really talking about today, the, the root of those patches and the, and the stuff that we're doing is going upstream to WireGuard Go. Our use of WireGuard Go as a user space implementation has been a common concern for a number of users who look at it and go, well, user space is slow and, and that, you know, that can be kind of a common thing. Um, what we have been able to achieve uh, is, you know, in an ideal scenario, in the best case, we're sometimes faster than the current kernel implementation. Now that will change over time. Everybody will improve performance over time as they put work in. Um, but really this should start to allay some concerns that like, just because it's user space, it's slow. Um, we, we're making improvements that mean that all of the implementation should be pretty close to equal performance and all of them should be performing really well. That's really amazing. So what kind of throughputs can users expect to see? Yeah, so in, in many sort of, you know, in your typical home lab scenario, in your typical, like um, you're on Wi-Fi or you're, you, you know, you've got a one gigabit per second home network kind of scenario or small office network, um, you should see line rate most of the time. Um, and, and if you don't, then there's, there's probably stuff that is worth us looking into. Um, if you're on a very fast internet connection, um, there were often times that we wouldn't quite reach peak line rate, you know, sort of max out your connection. Uh, nowadays, we should be able to, um, it, particularly if it's a Linux to Linux transfer, and we'll talk more about that, but the, these uh, improvements are focused on Linux. If you're on a 10 gig network, we're not going to reach line rate today. Um, 10 gig is an interesting challenge, not just for us, but for anyone who's doing encrypted VPN type transports, 10 gigs, 10, 10 gigs are a big number to reach, um, but we have made a big dent there, right? So we we're we're getting you know really into those speeds, uh, very much above one gigabit per second. So uh, big improvements there, uh, but there there'll be more to come in that space. Got it. Well, why don't we peek under the hood a bit, uh, and we'll turn it over to you, Jordan, to tell us how you actually went about increasing throughput. Sure. We increased throughput by changing the I/O model, which is the way in which we move data through tail scale from handling single packets to handling batches of packets. Uh, this, this change greatly reduced the amount of CPU time spent interfacing with the Linux kernel at the system call boundary. And it also 
reduced time spent on the kernel side traversing its networking stack. With CPU time reduced on both sides, we also are now moving larger amounts of data through the effectively the data pipeline within Tailscale, and this translates to increased throughput. Got it. Now, I've heard you both mention Linux a couple of times uh, throughout this talk. So just want to ask, are there any differences depending on which operating system you're using? Yeah, this initial set of changes is, is enabled for Linux. Uh, it's not yet enabled for other platforms, but we plan to extend these performance benefits to other platforms as time goes on. Well, fingers crossed those are sooner rather than later. Now, do users need to do anything to turn on this functionality? No, these changes uh, are enabled by default on Linux. Awesome. All right. Well, again, taking sort of a step back, uh, you know, looking more at your experience sort of building this, did you learn anything uh, from working on throughput? Definitely. Um, one of the, the biggest lessons I, I learned and, and relearned was to take a step back and kind of survey the landscape of what already exists before diving into a problem. Um, James found a function in the Linux ton driver that was ultimately the feature set that we leaned on um, to enable us to send uh, batches, send and receive batches of packets uh, on the ton driver side. And this feature uh, has actually existed in the Linux kernel since 2008, um, but it had largely gone unnoticed. Um, and we really benefited just from taking a step back and reading, reading the code. Always good advice for engineers. Uh, with that, James, I think I'll give you the last word. Is there anything else that people should know about throughput? I think the big thing uh, I just want to reiterate is, you know, it's Linux only for this version. Um, we we're going to work on on bringing these improvements to other platforms. Windows is is very likely the next one. It has a, a nice equivalent interface that we're going to use. Um, Direct connections, you know, if if you're seeing slow performance, the first thing to look at is, is are you establishing a direct connection? As I say, we do in most cases, but if you're seeing slow performance, that, that's the first thing to look for. Um, we've also uh, addressed a number of other bugs along the path to this work. So we've done a lot of analysis of like what's going on in flows. And so um, latency also matters, as I mentioned earlier. If you have a high latency link, if you're halfway around the world, that should, you should see greatly improved performance if your other node is halfway around the world from previously, um, but that will still have an impact. So, you know, you can expect very fast performance on the LAN, not always the same performance if you're going halfway around the world. Um, it should be much improved, but we will continue to be making improvements in those kind of areas over time. Awesome. Well, James and Jordan, thank you so much for that great overview of throughput. You should start seeing uh, higher throughput immediately, and you can visit tailscale.com for more information and to try Tailscale for free. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time.